Hello, learners. I trust you are all well. My name is uh, CPA Ringo Frederick, uh, your instructor for taxation. In our class today, I want us to consider our revision. And uh, handling this revision, we are looking at a concept which will affect both students doing advanced taxation and students doing uh, public finance and taxation intermediate level. The concept today is all about the capital gain tax. I understand we've already done this before, but for the purpose of our revisions, as you prepare for your exams, it will be important that we review what we did before. So what is a capital gain tax? Remember, this uh, component of a tax that uh, was uh, uh, basically reintroduced back in uh, 1st January 2015. So when you are talking of uh, capital gain tax, there are two elements that we need to understand here, first of all, very clearly. There's a component of capital gain, okay? There's a component of capital gain. So anytime you're talk of a capital gain, we should be able to understand that this is simply a gain on transfer of property situated in Kenya, yeah? This is a gain on transfer of property situated in Kenya. Doesn't matter whether this property was purchased on or before that 1st January 2015. So long as you're getting a gain on the transfer of property which is situated in, within Kenya, then that one you're going to term it as what? As capital gain. Now, this element that we are talking about, what? CGT now, the capital gain tax. So, looking at the capital gain tax, we are looking at the tax levied, tax levied on the gain of this transfer. The tax that is going to be levied on the gain of this transfer of property is now what you are referring to as what? The capital gain tax. Very important to understand. Okay? Then, go to the next level uh, of uh, this concept. What about the CGT rate, capital gain tax rate? Remember this rate was amended in 1st uh, January, applicable from 1st January 2023. Initially, capital gain tax was subjected at the rate of 5%. But currently, for those students who are doing any paper for tax within this year, not unless things change again, you're going to use the rate of 15%. Important to know these updates. So also be very keen with the document that you're using. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we are talking about the capital gain uh, tax rate, or rather the CGT rate. So CGT rate, you are seeing that, the rate of capital gain is at 15%. And this is a final tax. This is a final tax. Capital gain is at the rate of 15%. And this 15%, my good students, it is a final tax. What do we mean by the term final tax? So final tax is simply what you're saying is that that is the only component of tax. This gain will not be subjected to any other form of tax again. The capital gain tax is the only form of tax that is going to be applicable on that gain. Important to note. Mm -hmm. The other item to understand when you are talking about the capital gain uh, tax is how will you determine this capital gain? So for us to determine our capital gain, my good students, all that you should always tend to have in mind for us to determine our capital gain. We are talking of, number one, getting to know our transfer value and getting to know our adjusted cost. This is very important. Get to know your transfer value and also understand your adjusted cost. Mm -hmm. These are very, very important. And actually, after this uh, 
plus just be below the video, you'll be able to get uh, 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 to access uh, the revision paper that you have prepared, our block model paper that we prepared, which will help you a lot in, of course, doing your revision through the period. Also on the same, I'm also going to attach, of course, a very important document, which will entail the theory Q&A, which will also be of very benefit to you, which will really, really assist you. So we are saying that for us to determine our capital gain, we are about the transfer value minus the adjusted cost. The big question would be, how will you be able to determine your transfer value? So transfer value is simply taking our sales proceeds, sales proceeds, one that you are going to receive on a selling our property with less any incidental costs less any incidental costs incurred incidental costs will find that these are the costs that you're going to incur to enable us to sell this property like for example you have to advertise yeah you have to advertise advertisement at the same time maybe you have to pay an agent to do the task maybe there are some legal fees or cost that you're going to incur on disposing your asset. So these are what you're referring to as incidental costs. Other key element to understand here is the adjusted cost. Adjusted cost, AC. So when you are talking of adjusted cost, all we need to understand here is that you're talking about the cost of acquisition, cost of acquisition, slash construction, slash construction, we're going to add the incidental cost incurred on purchase or on acquiring the uh, this property. Incidental cost here are just the same, like uh, talk about agent, talk about legal cost, all these costs that you're going to incur on acquisition, right? Of course, uh, a conveyance fee that you're going to pay, all these costs then we are going to less any capital allowance that was deducted during the life of that property before you dispose it, capital allowances, see? So having this, it will enable us at least to determine that adjusted cost. So by doing this, we can conclude that we have our transfer value and we have our adjusted cost. So it will be very easy for us to determine our capital gain just a matter of us understanding these variables. It's just a matter of us understanding the variables listed there. So for this concept to sink in very well before you go to the concept of us looking at the exemptions of the capital gain tax, it will be appropriate that you look at a question. This question will enable us to understand the concept of capital gain tax very clearly. And here is our question I'm sharing with us here. Here is our question, which I want all of us at least to have an access uh, to have access to this to this question. I believe that is visible enough for us to see, right? I believe that is very visible enough for us to see. Mm -hmm. So here we are given this person known as Shebe, where we are told that uh, Shebe, yeah, Abdallah disposed of his property. Shebe Abdallah disposed of uh, his property. Shebe Abdallah disposed of his property in September 2022 for 18.5. The property consisted of a piece of land he had bought in 207. For 1.3, he had incurred a legal cost of 650 on his transfer. In addition, to stamp duty of 13,000. He put up an hotel at a cost of 9.8 and was completed in 208. A local politician laid a claim to the property in 2011. Sheba Abdallah filed a suit against her and won having spent illegal charges of 3.4 million, 3 million 450,000 on the case. The following costs were incurred to dispose of the property. Valuation, advertisement, 
commission to buyer seeking agents. Additional information on form. During the existence of uh, the lock or the hotel business, the building had been allowed investment deductions amounting to 740. <coughs> okay. The capital gain tax rate during the year was 5%. This was during that year, which in this case, this question was tested back in 2022, think, yeah? So this question was tested back in, uh, actually it was tested in 2023. And remember in 2023, we were using the race of 2022. So right now we are talking about the current rates which is 15%, okay? So we are asked to compute the capital gain tax, if any, payable by Shebe Abdallah on the disposal of his property. Then citing a reason, identify which of the following forms Shebe will use to file returns on transaction in D1 above. So having that case, it will be upon us to determine the capital gain tax. First of all, first of all, it will be upon us to number one, find out our capital gain. After we determine our capital gain, you can go ahead and of course determine the component of tax on that item. So this is what we should do. Allow us to erase this point. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about our capital gain, where we know very well, we've stated clearly, for us to determine our capital gain, we'll be talking about our transfer value minus our adjusted cost. This is what we've stated here. So task one, let us determine our transfer value. I've just given you uh, the way of how you can determine your transfer value. So what will be your transfer value in this case? We talk of our sales proceeds. In our case, a good examiner had given us a sales proceeds of how much? Sales proceeds. You're told that Abdallah disposed of his property in September for 18.5. So talk about our sales proceeds. Sales proceeds here, we're having 18.5. That is the figure that I'm given. 18,500,000, right? Consider incidental costs that we incurred on disposing this property. Incidental costs incurred on disposing our property. The incidental costs that we incurred, which uh, clearly we are given there, if at all, you can check the following costs were incurred to dispose of the property. We're having a valuation cost. Valuation cost, a good examiner had given us 247,000. Advertisement. For advertisement, a good examiner had given us 52,000. Then you're here about commission. Commission, our good examiner here, had given us a figure of 1,850,000. So we can all agree that our incidental cost will therefore be a figure of format if we sum them up. So we take our calculator, we have, uh, or maybe just deduct them directly actually, we can just deduct this directly, where we are talking of uh, 18.5 we less, uh, of course, uh, 247, we less 52, we less 1850. So we can all agree that our TV should be 16,351,000 to be our TV. This is our TV. 
uh -huh. after determining our TV, let us determine our AC. Let us determine our AC. So adjusted cost. Our adjusted cost, we follow the same script that Molimo has shared with us, where we talk about the cost of acquisition. Acquisition cost, in our context, as per a good examiner, we are told that the property consisted of a piece of land. So our acquisition cost entails, number one, land which was uh, 18, uh, land which was uh, 1.3. Yeah. Then the property consisted of a piece of land 1.3. He had incurred a legal cost of 650. That is, of course, uh, that is, of course uh, uh, incidental. In addition to stamp duty of 13. He put up an hotel, so I'm having a construction cost. Construction of hotel. Our construction of hotel, a good examiner had given us a value of 9.8. So we have 9.8. So acquisition and construction cost, how much will you be having? That will be the value there. Talk about acquisition and, uh, of course, construction cost. We should be having 1.3 plus 9.8 which would give us a value of how much? So I'm having 1.3 plus 9.8 to give us 11.1. Yeah, we add the incidental costs. Amongst our incidental cost as per our good examiner, as per our good examiner here, our incidental cost, of course, included Number one, the legal cost, the one that you've seen. Property consisted of a piece of land of 1.3. He had incurred a legal cost of 650. So these are incidental costs. We're having our incidental costs here, which will include, number one, we are talking about a legal cost on acquisition of land. A value that I'm given to be 650,000. We are also given stamp duty on that transfer. Stamp duty. We are given a value of 13,000. We are told that uh, in addition to that, we are told that uh, he put up a hotel building at a cost of 9.8 and was completed in 2.8, right? A local politician laid a claim to the property in 2011. Sheba Abdallah filed a suit against her and one having spent a legal charges amounting to 303 million. So this is another legal cost. So actually in this case, what you can do we can sum them up or just take it separate because it's a legal cost uh, paid for the claim of that, which you're given a value of 3,450,000. 3,450,000. So we need to sum up all this. Then we are going to less our capital allowance. With the capital investment, as per good examiner, we are told in Note 1 that we incurred 740,000. So this one you're going to less. So therefore, we can agree that our AC should be our adjusted cost. Adjusted cost. Therefore, we can agree to be the values that you're going to take here, which will include 11.1 .1 plus 650 plus 13 plus 34.50 with less 740. So you're getting 14,473. 14,473. 
to be our SC. I need to determine my capital gain. Our capital gain, we've said, we are to take our transfer value minus adjusted cost. So therefore, with a lot of confidence, we can agree that my capital gain would be how much? Our capital gain will be 16, 351 minus answer to give us 1878, 1,878,000. Having our capital gain, what would be our CGT? Capital gain tax, therefore, will be 1878 by our current capital gain tax rate of 15%. Of 15 percent that would give us our capital gain tax of how much times 0.15 this would give us 281 700 see that would be your capital gain tax that would be your capital gain tax so this is a concept of cgt this is a concept of the capital gain tax and we are applying our current rates mm -hmm. We are applying our current rates. So that is the procedure. For the case of exams, you can just do it directly, right? So, so long as you know how to work it out, you can go and work it out directly. The other part we are told, uh, the other part we are told that uh, the other part you are told that uh, Citing a reason, yeah, look at that case. Citing a reason, identify which of the following forms Shebe will use to file returns on transaction in B1 above. So you're given these forms. So it will be important for us to identify which forms are we supposed to use, of course, to file these returns. Molimu will explain for us all these types of forms, but for this case, for the case of Shebe here, we are going to use the form number CGT1. That is the form that you're going to use. CGT1. Why? You'll find that anytime you talk of uh, CGT1, this form, capital gain tax form number one, capital gain tax form number one, these are form that we normally use to file returns on capital gain tax transaction. So in this case, this form is always used to declare and pay capital gain tax on the disposal of what? On the disposal of property. So these are forms that uh, we normally tend to fill and file on the disposal of uh, property, on the disposal of property, on the disposal of property. So Shebe in this context will use the CGT1, CGT1, because it is specifically designed for property. It is specifically designed for property disposal transactions. It is specifically designed for property disposal transactions. Yeah. CGT, because we've also seen that we're having this other form, capital gain tax. 2P. Maybe next time you might be asked about that form. So it is important to understand that capital gain tax, uh, cap capital gain tax from 2P, you'll find that uh, these are form or uh, these are form used to declare in paying capital gain tax on the disposal of shares. These are disposal of shares listed in the stock exchange. Disposal of shares listed in the stock exchange listed in the stock exchange that is from capital gain tax from 2p we having from a uh, capital gain tax capital gain tax from 3 you'll find that these are form that we normally tend to fill while filing the capital gain in relation to disposal of assets other than property or shares. 
disposal of other assets disposal of other assets disposal of other assets disposal of other assets other than the property and shares so my good students that question was uh, very well curated in a sense that it covered a lot of concepts in relation to the capital gain tax so the last element that will be required to understand for capital gain is simply exemptions of capital gain which of course we'll be looking at it later on so our revision classes have commenced if you know you're doing the coming exam and you need to prepare adequately below this video i have attached a model paper specifically for taxation public finance i've also attached a document containing q and a so make sure that you take advantage of these documents because it will open your mind very well. I know, I'm very sure of that. I'm very sure of that. So for those who are willing to join our block revisions, which have already started, make sure that you got, uh, make sure that you get in touch with us on this number, 0708-068-851. If at all you're preparing for your exams, and you know like uh, you need to polish yourself well here and there, make sure that you get in touch with us on this number. Yeah, make sure that you get in touch with us on this number. I know you're going to be helped. I'm 100% sure of that. So to this point, this was all for our today's session. Let us meet in our next session whereby we are going to handle other concepts. Thank you so much and see you in our next class. Bye-bye.